hi guys it's me Karen and I've come to do a quick little picture in the mouse guard coloring book by David Peterson okay what I did earlier was I was playing around with the book and decided I would try out just distress inking a picture so this is all done with just distress ink and then two pencils uh, one is a Sargent Art Supreme and it's in dark brown and one is a black Prismacolor. The black Prismacolor I did just a little work around here and um, darkening shadow areas on the lantern. The dark brown I used just to color in some um, shadow lines in the wood here and a little around his eye. The rest of this is done in Distress Ink along with the background. And since I didn't uh, film it, I thought I would do this picture here. I know it's kind of big. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to show you the best I can. I'm going to keep the camera up uh, off the, um, well, up as far as I can so you can see most of the page. I'll put it that way. Because it's just inking and I don't need to um, really be as close as I do with the pencils, okay? Now, I've got a dress, Distress inks out here. Um, I used green on the last one. So we have a vintage photo and gathered twigs, which we're going to do on the owl itself. He's like a burrowing owl, barn owl type critter. So he's going to be done in the browns. Um, I will bring in the green for the pine and the juniper berries that are on this tree. I have a little bit of um, hickory smoke, which is a gray color, H mahogany for her outfit, and a stormy sky, probably for the sky background here. I will probably also get out another green. I'll have to look for another green, but I want to uh, make it like a pine green. And I have something called pine needles. So that might work with that. Okay. The only other thing I have to do is, um, obviously this one is brown on the brown tool here. And I have to bring in, I have a pink one for the pink. Maybe I'll use another pink one. I don't know. I have to bring in that one's in case I use the brown. I need a blue one. They're just the pads. These are really um, old pads. <laughs> I've had these distress inks for like four or five years, maybe even longer than that. Okay, so we have the blue, we have a red, we have a gray. I have the brown on here, and I need a green. Something to put a green down with. And here is a green one. Okay. So let me see if we are in frame here. Well, it's pretty much in frame. I might miss a little bit of this down here in the bottom. I'll try to remember to move it up and down as I'm working. But since the camera is up so high, I cannot see it. <laughs> And I will just be judging distance. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, vintage Photo has got more red and a deeper brown tone than the gathered twigs. So we're going to start with the gathered twigs. The lighter areas I want to leave um, kind of uh, a very light color. I think I might even have a light um, got wild honey and I got the hood that's really bright I've got some neon colors in there nope I'm not gonna find anything honey might be, honey might be a little too orangey okay then we'll just leave that area kind of a light color I'll just put a very light coating of the ink okay again this tool is four to five years old. These sponges are that old also. I use them quite a bit. I'm just going to ink up one portion of this and use the round to my 
uh, how do you say that? The round edge is going to fit nicely in the round corner. So to, <laughs> you know what I'm thinking. I don't even know how to say it. So I'm just going to ink it up. And you may see me rub it, but I'm going to rub it just on the one side. To bring in some ink, and I'm just going to lay it down here in this little curve area here. And I'm going to lightly pounce out some color. I'll rub it a little bit, and that'll get a deeper color. And then just drag it on out. And it's a light touch when I do that. Okay, so we're just going to turn it around and kind of come down into the color that I put down. I don't want to go over that edge, so for that I'm going to take a piece of sticky note, put it up here on the top so I don't go over the edge. Okay, and that'll help me because I can now pull it down without having to worry about that line. Okay. Didn't help much on this side, but put a little on the corner there and just come down the side of his face, accenting the way his uh, fluff comes out and around his eyes. And then just pulling it out. Same on this side, putting a little in there. Okay. Now he's mostly brown there. I'm going to come down on his chest here. Same thing, going where it's black. Putting that down on that and then pulling it and dragging it downward. We don't want to get uh, too much on the branches or her tail. So I'm using that edge again to darken it next to whatever this is because I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> but it's not part of the owl and it's not part of the tree. So I'm inking up that corner and I'm rotating it so I can get the ink on this side of it. Just using that as the line that I'm drawing on there and then I can just drag the color up. Get a little closer to her face here. Okay, I'm going to get some of that color on this side. So just inking up that one part, drawing a line down here. Very light touch on this because there's a little more ink on it. Just staying away from her ears. Okay, so we have mostly a brown owl. Somewhere in between here is the brown of the owl and the tree, so we have to kind of just pick our spots in here and then just drag it up. Okay, Get a tiny bit of that on the owl's face. I'm just going to use a sticky note and See, there really isn't much ink on this. Just going to go in here and add a little bit of color so it's not the white paper. Under his nose, I'm going to push it down a little harder because there's going to be a shadow there. And then just run it out. Turn it. Do the same thing on this side. Darken it. And then just bring out the color. Okay, so that is what we've got so far. I'm going to want to darken some areas on him. So, same ink pad, changing it to the vintage photo. Same thing, I'm going to go in just on that corner, and I'm going to just draw it around on the edge. And this is a different color, and it'll give it some depth here in his feathers. And add there down in the darkness here so wherever it's really dark put some of that that's under his chin or his fluff here 
Okay. Just darken those up. And kind of drag it down into the other color we have. There we go. Now, his beak has got to be kind of a, um, and his eyes, yellow, yellowish, orangish, I guess you call it. So I have this little cube. You can get them in small cubes and big cubes. And I'm going to put in some of this. So I just take off the brown one. And on the bottom, I have the little pads that we use on these on Distress Ink. If you're going to be using them like this, you want to go kind of light to dark. So I'm going to just add some yellow here on his beak where the shadow would be or the highlight would be. I'm also going to go into his eyes. Oh, that's not sticking on there very good, is it? Wiggling it with my finger. Trying just to get the eye area. If I come out, it's okay. I can touch that up with a little brown or a... Um, pencil. Okay, so that's all the yellow we want in there. Um, he has no feet, so... I mean, you can't see him. So there's no need to put him in. But we do have all these uh, juniper berries. And I'm going to put a little of the yellow, just kind of smush it in there, in some of these berries as a highlight. Put some up here, and some over here. Okay. Just because I'll be adding a different color on there, and I'm not using too many pencils to change the look of anything here. Take the yellow pad off, attach it back to the bottom. Then we're going to go in with the Spice Marmalade. The yellow one was, what's it called? Mustard Seed. So we're going to take it again on the edge and we're going to throw some of the Spiced Marmalade into his beak. We're going to do the same thing with his eyes. We're going to kind of go where the pupil is and then outward. We can also, if we like, um, we have smaller tools to get into these areas to find out which one has the least amount of color on it. So we can get in here just a little easier. This one also has a little um, darkness to it, so I can use that to my advantage is what I was trying to come up with last time. Use that darkness that was on there just to add a little extra shadowing in here. Okay. Now you gotta remember one thing about Distress Ink, it will go on darker and it will dry lighter. So sometimes you wanna put a little more on there than you like, or you can go back in and uh, reapply it. Alright, now if you have a question about um, Distress Ink, it is a Tim Holtz product and it is a water-based dye ink that is fade resistant and water-based. Um, so you can put water on it and lift it. You can put it on a plastic sheet, add a water brush and paint with it.
you can add water with a spray bottle and it will move on its own. There's a lot of fun things to do with the Distress ink. All right, we're gonna go in with the greens. So I need to find the um, green one. And we'll just attach that. I like to go in with the light green first. So between the two peeled paint and pine needles, the teal paint is going to be the lar a lighter color. So again, on just the side there, and we're gonna start just here on the, um, I'm gonna call them cedar. Is cedar plant the one that has the berries? I'm not sure. Again, down here on the corners, we do not want to go over our white line. We wanna keep it white. So out come our sticky notes again. And we'll just apply them down. And then we can go right to the edge with our color. I'm going to be using two different colors in here. So we'll add some in, put some on the berries here too. And then I will get the um, other ink and go on top of that. But I have to do all the light first. So I'm just going to go around. I'm going to move my sticky notes to this side. I go through a lot of sticky notes if you're wondering. <laughs> and just rub in the color here. Putting it through. Okay, then we're going to go up towards the top. And if you'll notice, there's a little line here, and I will fix that with a pencil. It's a little hard to get the um, not real close and perfect with your sticky notes. You'll get that little white line. Okay. We're up at the top again, and we're just gonna take it and rub that color in. Okay, now that we've got most of that down, we will leave the same uh, green spongy on here. You can wash these if you like. <laughs> they don't have to look like mine look. You can take them off, you can wash them, let them dry, make sure they're dry fully before you attempt to use them again, or your ink will have a reaction to it. Okay, this is pine needle, and I'm gonna darken some of those little berries up. And then I'll just kind of here and there, put a little of this color in. Okay. And then when we pull up the paper, we get this nice little effect. Put this one back down here. And we'll do the same thing. Darken the berry. I'm trying to darken it on the bottom side. And then just add some of this ink. here and there, and we have a cool look. Then we'll get on this side. And do the same thing. So kind of dark on the bottom of the berries, just like you would if you were coloring it with a colored pencil dark on the shadowy areas, using that little corner to get into the berry part. Like that. Then I just add the berry in there, some of the green. 
and touch it on the areas that didn't get green before or just where you think it would look nice as a shadow. Okay. Then we have that done. All right, the little basket is also done in, you know, basket colors, so that would be brown. We're gonna go in with the vintage photo because we don't want it to look exactly like the bird, but we want it to have the brown effect. So just on that corner again, just bring in some of that brown. You can also add, if this is like a um, cedar or a juniper type tree, they have a little brown in them also. So we can add a little brown in here. A little dimension. Just another layer of color. Okay. There we go. All right, green's done. Brown is done. I need to make her a gray mouse, which is going to be a little difficult. I liked making the brown mouse, but we have to do a gray because we don't want her blending into the owl either. This is hickory smoke. Always hard to figure out which is the side that you're supposed to use on this one because it's black. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring in a piece of paper. I'm going to ink this up. I'm going to wipe some of it off and I'm going to go in where she is the darkest. Then I'm just going to drag in some of this color. Okay, get up in her ear. Go around her nose here, down here around her chin. I'm just rubbing it like I did up in the owl. The hat area, we can get a little under there. I'm just barely touching it on this edge. Bringing that in. You can ink over her eyes and anything up here because we can darken that or we can use the gray that I put up here as a shadow. Okay, so we have gray on her face and it's a light gray. We can darken the edges, but we don't want to put too much on her. Her ear over here. And always come in with pencil and give her shadows, but you don't really want to try to take ink away. We're going to put a little on her hands. And she is holding a berry. I should have colored in that berry. Okay, so now we have a little gray mouse. Her outfit is going to be done in... I gotta do the berry, it's gonna drive me nuts. Green coming back on. <laughs> Same piece of paper because we have the darkest green on here. We want to wipe that off. We want to go back to the light green. Where did I put the light green? There we go. And we are going to put it on the corner there. Dab this berry up. And add in the uh, darker green. Just on the bottom here. There we go. That's close enough. Always add a little brown in there also. I'll get to that later. Her outfit, we are going to do in um, aged mahogany. So, 
with the edge mahogany. We're going to have to do it the same way we did the gray. I have to pounce this off on another sheet because this is dark. And I may need to get a different... There we go. Okay. So we're going to start on the rim of our hat. Just going around and then very lightly bringing that color up. Kind of using it in a rotated motion. I'm turning the tool while I'm doing this just to get it in the round of her hat. We're going to also put this on her, I am guessing this is a dress. <laughs> so I'm just getting this little tiny lip on the ink, pouncing it off and using it just to draw right in that little line. So I'm going to draw it down this little line and this one. Okay. I'm going to try to get that a little darker. Then we're just going to rub it on to her lower dress, her sleeve. And her skirt area. And she's got a skirt area over on this side. Okay. And this little thing down here. I'm not sure what this little thing is, but it's part of her. This is her foot over here. There. Now we're going to go in with one of these little tools and I'm going to get some of that ink on here and then where it's in the shadow of her arm, I'm just going to lay a little bit down there and blend it out. This is a mini detail tool. So you can get into little details. It's a teeny tiny sponge put on a dowel. <laughs> I'm sure you can get creative and not have to um, spend the money on one of these, but a lot of people use this makeup, uh, things you can get off of either Wish or Amazon. They're makeup brushes. I just use these all the time, so I don't use the other ones. Okay, so I'm just adding the darkest colors here in the darkest spots that you would add your dark um, pencils. Okay, so there would be a shadow under here. We're not going in the basket, but there's a shadow under the arm, so we'll add some there. There's a shadow in between the arm and her chest area and then a little on her sleeve and I can get around to the little portions over here and just a little more color in there and just kind of put it where you would think a shadow would be and then it's just dragging the ink up all right so that will dry. I have to get her a little gray here, so I'll just get out the gray. Oh, this is dark brown. Hold up. Okay, where's the other one? That's green. <laughs> green, and I don't know what color that is. 
that'll work okay so this is her fur here and we're just going to put a light coloring right there just where the um, darkest lines are I'm just going to darken that and she's got a little arm here that comes down okay Use that to darken up her ear on this side and the ear over here. Just bring that down. I know she got a little pink on her hands, which is okay because a little pink is nice. We got a little foot over here we gotta get to. Alright. Now she has a tail coming up here, so we might as well get her tail while I have this out. Whoa, that was fun. <laughs> Try to hold on to our tools. So we're just going around it and darkening that up. If we need any more darkness, I don't know if you can even see this. The top of the book here. I'm gonna put a little dark here under his beak and add a little gray in here also. Add a little of that right there in the corner of his eyes. is kind of going like, what are you doing in my tree? Uh, okay, there we go. Hopefully you can't hear the guys doing yard work outside. It's very interesting. They're doing um, yard work. We're having a storm. It's pouring down rain out there. But I guess they can do what they want to do. All right, now we have uh, a green bow here. I still don't know what this is. Um, it could be her sword that comes down that has uh, wood on it. So I'm guessing that's what it is. And the sheath and then the little brown area that comes across here. Now I'm going to bring in my brown pencil for that. So we're just going to shade in over the red, so she'll have this nice little red and brown belt thing that comes down here. And that is going to hold her, and we'll just shadow in some of this woodwork. And this is how I did it on the other page. Just adding some brown in there to accent what is already there, the wood. Okay, but I'm not exactly sure what this is. This is part of her sword that comes out here. And what I'm going to do is add a little of the uh, a greenery here and um, get some green down on this and then anywhere else that I needed to add it if it's too white I will do it with this little tiny tool going to bring in uh, some of the blue and we're going to put it in the background here. Did 
I use one of these sticks for the red, didn't I? Yeah, I can use that up here in her hat too. Can get that a little darker there. Just like that. I am sorry, I should have had the light on this whole time. Why don't I do that for you? I'll just turn the lights on. You can actually see what I'm doing. I'll get used to this setup at some point in time. Okay, blue. This is Stormy Skies. We're going to um, put our sticky notes back around here. And we've got one up there, and we're just going to take the blue on, to get it on the uh, pad right, on that corner again. And we're just gonna add it in here very lightly. Try not to get her ear. We want a blue sky in the background. Okay. Take that off. And we're gonna put it on the other side. Over here. And just add it in. A little bit down in here. I think there's a tiny bit here. There we go. Add some of this blue into your areas down there, also. Now, the only thing left to do is a little tiny touch up. And if you can see the whole page, I think you can. I'm going to add the brown that I added onto her thing here. I'm going to add some of that into the eyes. Darken this area up here. I want this a little darker too, so we're just going to bring some down in here. This is a Sergeant Art Supreme, and it is dark brown. Just knock back some of that yellow, yellow, yellow. Same over on this side. Darken it a lot underneath the eyebrow area and then just lightly bring it out. And then you just kind of add it where you would like it to have a little more depth. And I'm using the brown here instead of black. Just for shadowing areas. Okay. Bring some of that up into his beak too. I'm going to make the tip of the beak darker. Okay, you can also use the brown to go around and deepen any parts you want of her dress or to bring up or down any of the shadow lines that you would like. Okay, especially under her arms or around her arms, any place I didn't get any of the ink. Up here in her hat. Just gonna go around the rim here. We're gonna add it as her tie.
and add it in here also. bit of shading here to cover up the little bit of pink that I got in her fur. And then add a little bit in up here just to make it look a little bit like I intended to do that on purpose. Okay, tiny little pink on her nose. Make sure I get the pink here. Just a touch. On her uh, wraps around her arms, I'll use a little of this too to darken some areas. Very light in the white areas, and then a little bit more pressure down on the bottom. These uh, Sergeant Arts work really well on top of the Distress Ink. Could be polychromos do too. I just didn't have them out. Okay, add a little shadow down here. If you want, you can go around into the basket, adding little shadows in here. You just keep working until you're, you're happy with it. <laughs> and you can add um, some of the brown in here on the berries too and help add to the shadows in this area. Add some on her fingers. Add some shadowing down here. Of course, if you add it somewhere on the berries, you've got to add it to all the berries. little berries in here. Anyway, so that is basically how I did the other picture too. So anywhere you want to shadow, you just go in and add a little bit more. You can um, use the black also. I happen to like to use the brown. But like if you want to get her tail just a bit darker, just come in with the black. Add extra lines if you want. A little more color in her ears. I might want to add some pink in there. Get rid of some more of that pink that we had in that color. Just very lightly. Add in any shadows you like. This is where I play a lot. <laughs> but for the most part, we are done here. The owl's eyes, I will go in on the pupils and darken them up a little more. Add just a little more gray in here. And at the end of the video, I will show you exactly what she ended up looking like. It's basically this. I'll probably add a little more shadows in here 
And if I think it needs to have a little more uh, green or blue, I'll just dab it in there. <clears throat> anyway, thank you guys for watching. And that is the done picture. Doesn't take too long, and I really enjoy doing it like this. I will darken up her little um, belt here, too. If you can get the inside of that. And we'll kind of leave it a pink buckle with a little shading on it. Anyway, <laughs> like I said, thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't if you have thank you so much and i will see you in the next video take care everyone bye now <laughs>